Paul, still trying to deceit proof the Christians of Colossae. As if he's trying to work damp proofing into a wall with a brush, but he's actually working you know, truthfulness and deceit proofing the people by really working it in with a brush. And he's concentrating them on Christ, isn't he? Repeatedly in that passage. In Christ, in Christ, in Christ, like this. Da, 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 da. External rules, then he says, ritual and religion, not the way. And it is important in my book that we're quite clear with people. That ritual, religion, and rules are not the way. Now that's born on my study, out of my study of Scripture, it's born out of my experience of God, and it's born out of what I do day in, day out, and try to talk to people about the Lord and bring them to know Him. Because the biggest problem we've got here, now, is the perception that what we're about is ritual, religion, and rules. Relics. Yeah, we'll stick around a ritual or something. We'll find another half for that. Because I haven't got relics in this passage. I have no warrant to run there. We'll do that another day. Sweet. Relics. Oh, no. I know where I'm going from. It. Leave me alone. <laughs> I'm too tired and distracted at the moment to manage otherwise. Sorry. Just, no, feel free to chip in. I'll pick up wherever I was. Where was I? Oh. So, of course, there are going to be those in Colossae who say to Paul, you're being very negative. We don't want to hear that. Perhaps they kindly suggest he takes a holiday, because obviously he needs one if he's being that negative, you know? <laughs> hmm. What a nice thought. Well, he was being negative. Because when there's stuff that's wrong, and there's doing damage and causing harm, what are you going to be? Well, you're either going to acquiesce in it and be part of it, or you're going to say this is wrong. Pack it up. And there is a time when you are dealing with strongly asserted positions and practices that are irredeemably wrong. You have to say, no, 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 no. Not the way. And I think there's a reluctance to do that in Wales. I see a tremendous reluctance, and I wonder why. Is it the desire to be liked? You don't get far as a Christian if you're, if you're imprisoned by a desire to be liked. Do you? Is it, is it a, a, an innate insecurity? Isn't Jesus enough to take care of us? If we have to say from time to time, that's wrong. And then, rationally and reasonably, as Paul does, show why, and show, show the foolishness of it all. You don't get much more negative, the way that's defined wrong, than Isaiah, as he's talking about idols. Is that Isaiah 43? You know, <laughs> you're joking. You lot, you take a lump of wood, with part of it, you make a little idol, you burn and you worship, and you say, my God, it's my God. And the other bit warms your pot. Makes your cup up. There was time for that. And helping people see the uh, internal contradictions of their position. And that's what Paul is doing today in this passage in Colossians. Colossians 2, 16 to 23. He's doing it, he is being negative, to deceit proof those who are the people of God. So whenever they can, Paul, John, Peter, the biblical authors, speaking under inspiration in general, they balance commendation and condemnation. Commending anything they can that is good and right, before seeking to correct false practices or false teaching which seriously threaten the health and integrity of the people and the work of God. That's what false doctrine does. It is serious. Now you get a classic example of that. Can you think of a classic example of that in Scripture? I'm glad to see you've all been reading Revelation recently. Because there in the first two, well, chapters 2 and 3 of Revelation, you've got a classic example. Of these churches, Paul writes to Smyrna and Philadelphia, and he says, look guys, this is great about you, but this, <laughs> get on top of this. And he writes to one church where he can't find anything positive to say. 
You are lukewarm, he says to the church in Laodicea, just up the road from Colossae, where these teachings are in the environment. And by the time John, later on, writes that letter to Laodicea, he's saying, look, I wish that you were either hot or cold, you're lukewarm. Terrible indictment. Lukewarm for Jesus. I wish you were either hot or cold, but because you're neither hot or cold, I'm going to spew you out of my mouth. You can't use words like that in a sermon. Yes, you can. He says, I'll pick you up. Interesting that they're in that thought world, in that culture, just down the road there in the like is fine, where Paul is warning these Colossians against this heresy that's going to eat away at their life and their relationship with Christ, and a little while later on, in the same sort of environment, we don't know, but it's interesting that John then has to write, on behalf of the Spirit of God, you're neither lukewarm, you're lukewarm, you're neither hot and cold. Your spiritual life has been elevated. The guts have been taken out of it. All this emphasis in Christ that Paul is trying to make has been lost. And the fire's in the way. And the heart is cold. Things common, though slightly differently demonstrated, in Welsh church life were threatening the church life at Colossae. And it's hard sometimes then to be positive, isn't it? One of the things Paul comes down on warns the Colossian Christians about in no uncertain terms. Three things. As the passage progresses, ritual, religion, and rules. I have three points, and they all begin with R. <laughs> More than that, Paul warns against letting anyone judge us on the basis of those three things. Now tell me that ain't relevant in Wales today. Anybody? Let's have a look at it. 